Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this new series that I'm going to be launching for my channel over the next couple of weeks, hopefully, if I actually get around to finally making a video, because I always make excuses not to, I'll be trying to focus a lot more on otaku uh, merchandise maintaining and tips and tricks that I've used when it comes to otaku collecting. Now this can pertain to anything such as figurines, character goods, dakimakura, posters, wall scrolls, whatever it is you like to collect that at least is part of my collection, I'll try to touch base on. Now, a lot of these tips and tricks are just personal tips and tricks that I've used over the years to maintain my collection. If you have any suggestions or have any tips and tricks that you've used, please feel free to leave those comments in the comment section itself, or just anything you feel is generally helpful when it comes to collecting. I'm in no way in any shape or form an expert when it comes to this. And that being said, most of the tips and tricks I'm going to offer are just my personal things that I have noticed. For example, when it comes to poster collecting, I'm not going to really know too much about the different styles of paper that are used, such as enhanced matte, glossy, and photo luster, but I will at least discuss the difference that I see, and if somebody is a far better expert than I am, please feel free to share your comments in the comment section, or just feel free to take as much as you can out of these videos. So that being said, for the first part of the series, I'm going to be discussing posters. Now before I get started with any of these videos, I do want to warn you that a lot of this material is not safe for work. If you do plan to watch this video, please watch it at your own leisure, um, out of respect for anyone around you, uh, because a lot of this material, being that it is from Japan and being that it is otaku goods, will have some more lewd content. So with that being said, why don't we get started with the video. So for the first part we're going to be discussing, I have two different rooms I've set up. Now I have my main room in here, which has most of my figurines and boxes, which I still need to pack. And this has a style of lighting that's a lot dimmer. And over here, we have a more well-lit area in my room, which will allow us to view posters at different lighting. And this is important because the different styles of paper that are used when you come to printing posters are all determined by the lighting, essentially. So you have enhanced matte, you have photo luster, or premium photo luster, I guess is what a site would call it, and glossy luster, or more glossy material. Now, I don't have any examples of the glossy material, but I do have examples of the photo luster, which are most of my posters, as well as one enhanced matte. So I'll kind of compare the different styles and explain them a little bit to you. So that being said, why don't we get started? The first thing I'm going to start with is the room that is dimly lit. Now, most of these posters, in fact, every single one of these posters in this room, is made with photo luster. Now, you'll see in a dimly lit area, you can see how some of the light reflections bounce off of this material and how it doesn't really cast a massive glare. There are sunspots that you can see when the lighting is going off, but for the most part, the light itself, which is this small dim light right above, doesn't really cast too much lighting on the material itself. Enhanced matte also does this. When you have a more glossy material, it's really going to show fingerprints. It's really going to show a lot of that kind of, I guess, <laughs> you know, not dirt and grime, but, you know, fingerprints, is, I guess is, yeah, the best thing I could say. So, photo luster, the one benefit I like about it is that when it comes to dimming the rooms, you can still see a lot of stuff, and the paper itself is much more maintainable. Now, a little bit later in the video, I'm going to compare enhanced matte versus photo luster, and I'll compare the different styles, and what I personally prefer, I obviously personally prefer photo luster because the paper, A, is not made of a more flimsy material, it's a lot more durable, and B, um, it can have a lot of different stick material, including duct tape, including silly putty, including tacks, however you want to put it up. If you even want to frame these photos and keep like one poster framed, you can do that as well. Now, most of these posters I have printed from a custom site that I use that allows me to print all these posters. Uh, most of the part, it's very easy to upload them. I've talked about this site in other videos. And it's really easy, especially if you live in the U.S., to pay for this kind of stuff because they have a lot of deals and percents off that you can use to get pretty cheap posters. So let's kind of look at something. Uh, the site I actually use is a site that actually leaves a lot of um, this white border on the edge of each of them. And that white border is nice because I put a lot of uh, clear thumbtacks in each of the corners of my posters to hang them up. But the Clear lines on the outside are really nice because whatever material you use, if you want to put like tape or whatever you want to use, if you want to use it, um, you can put that up and it's really nice, which is one of the reasons I majorly like it. Now, some sites will print them on the whole page. Um, it's always good to know that whatever site you're going to use, if you are going to print custom posters, find out how they actually print them themselves. What is the margin that is used uh, for that extra white space? Also, how do they actually measure the poster prints themselves? Do you have to convert the DPI on the actual resolution? Now, again, I'm not a photo expert. Or are you just able to upload an image 
and go with that. Now, most of my images I find online. I upscale them using Waifu two times, which is a website that upscales it and keeps most of the noise level without reducing a lot of the image quality. You will see some quality loss, but it's really if you get in and focus it. I actually like the more blurred line style that's very hard to see unless you get really close. And so that's why I really like the more um, enhanced size ones. So a lot of the times I just enhance the photo, increase its size, and then I post it that way. Now most posters on the site I print, um, sites that have posters such as these, which are usually large posters, run for about $40 with the premium luster. They'd be about 20 bucks to 30 bucks for the enhanced matte, and the most expensive material out of all of them is going to be the gloss, which is probably going to be more in the 60 range. And these are just unframed prints. You can also frame your prints as well, which will cost a lot more, usually in the $100 range because you're actually framing the print. But for the most part, a lot of this stuff is just printed as is. Now, if I want to ever frame these, I can. I could probably find pretty cheap ways to frame them or put them in some protective material, but it's not really something I'm going to actually do. And yeah, so that being said, um, some of the more important things to keep in mind when it comes to the actual poster itself is they're very easily able to be carried. A lot of the times from the website I use, they use special tubes, which are really nice because then you can pack these up and carry them wherever you want. The problem with a lot of these though is that it takes up a lot of space. If you can tell I really don't have any more wall space and I still have millions of posters and wall scrolls I would love to hang up, but I can't. But the reason I'm also panning this camera a lot is just to show you the different lighting angles because if you can see like all the different light angles, that's kind of what I'm trying to make you focus on. See how it actually reflects off photo luster. Personally, I prefer it that way. It doesn't show too many fingerprints, but it also has higher quality material. For example, if I ever want to hang posters on the wall or the ceiling in this case, I'm sorry, you can actually put duct tape on the back of these and because of the material on the back, which I'll show in a little bit, it won't actually ruin a lot of it. So that's one benefit. Another benefit, as I mentioned, is just, I don't know, I like the look. Glossy is going to be probably the most expensive though. Glossy is something that would be like this clear plastic on a figurine box. The uh, clear film in the front is more of a glossy appearance. Now, ultimately, it's not going to be made of that plastic material, but just imagine the kind of surface where you can see your reflection in it if you have, you know, not very deep colors. And so that's more glossy. Now, glossy is going to be the most expensive, but I don't really like it because it reflects way too much light. Enhanced matte I don't like because the paper is too flimsy, so I kind of fall somewhere in between. Now, in terms of the pricing, they say that premium photo luster is not as expensive as the glossy and it's a little more expensive than the enhanced matte so to compare the different styles now we go into a different room and I'm just going to kind of walk around this way because I just want to show you the different lightings and higher lit rooms depending on where you are I mean you can still see the glare and the reflect it doesn't really reflect though you see the glare but you don't see the reflection so depending on where you place your posters if you do have posters in your room you can see different lighting effects now like I said though most of this stuff is going to be In a well-lit room I don't really get a lot of Sun down in this area except for the small window that's up here but most of this stuff is just kind of in a basement area so it's not really that well lit but it depends now getting down more to brass tacks we have an enhanced mat in front of me and a photo luster below it so let's compare the two so getting into the photo luster if you see that I actually show it a little more closely or closely in this case um, you'll notice that the back is a much, um, you know, non-papery material. It can still be ripped very easily, so it's not hard to rip it, but it is deeper in that way. When you go to the enhanced mat, though, while there really is, like, no glare on this, like, just looking at the different angles I'm putting that this at with lighting, you see that, like, right here there's a bunch of light reflection, or if I put that same poster in that same spot, there's, like, none. And the problem is, though, is that it's really cheap paper material. So it's really easily able to be ripped, and it's pretty cheap quality. It also has this kind of grainy feel to it that I don't really like. So I only ever did one of those that way, just to test the waters. It was the first poster I ever printed. And then I started going to the Proto Luster, uh, because I like the Photo Luster better. Ultimately, it's your decision how you want to print the posters. For posters that are large, these are about 20 to 40, I'm sorry, 40 bucks um, with discounts, and depending on how you ship them, uh, you can end up paying about $40, even less. Uh, even You can get the shipping free for if you shop at the site I shop at because I get 30% off like everything, so shipping is absolutely free, and it covers the tax as well. But it depends on how you want to shop. Now, if you do enhanced man, you're looking at about 20 bucks for about that poster right there. 
If you go glossy, you're looking more at like $60, again, for unframed prints. If you get to the more large posters, now those are about $99. Okay, so obviously a full 36 by 24 inch or really large poster, which includes the Hibari one here, the Basho one here, the Yami one in there, the Prismalia one, and then the Faint Nanaho one, or the uh, Vivid Nanaho one. Those are the only four absolutely large posters I own. Oh, there's one more here, which has Video Nineheart as well, but that's underneath it. So those cost about $99. Obviously, the large posters are going to cost $99, but for the quality you get, if you want to print a large 6,000 by you know 4,000 image picture, do it. It's pretty fun. Anyways, that's really all I want to touch base on this video. Um, if you do have questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to do a tutorial again on this part of the channel, in this playlist that I'm making how to actually print these and do them again with waifu two times to enhance their size, etc. Keep some of the quality with it unless you really get into detail. So let me know if you are interested in that. For the next video I'm going to be making this series, we're going to talk about Dakimakura, and I'm going to share some of the Dakimakura I have as well as showing how to wash them. Now I've already added to this part of the video the Dakimakura, or this playlist, I'm sorry, the Dakimakura showcase for how to properly stuff them in terms of how I was able to stuff them. So hopefully these videos are helpful tips for you. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys appreciated it and we will always catch you as always in the next video. Peace out.